Sorry. I've been told that a good ghost likes to scare people. Good day to you all. My name is Sir Francis Drake of England. I was born around 1540 to my father Edmund Drake, a sailor who raised me in Tavistock, Devon, England. I was the eldest child of a large family, and at the early age of 18, I began what would be my trade for many years, sailing. I apprenticed with John Hawkins for a number of years in the slave trade before I became the captain of my own ship in 1568. I was just reminiscing about my journey to one particular place in what is now South America, the lovely Cartagena de las Indias. Let me set the stage for you. In the mid-16th century, the seas were lawless as at any time in the last 400 years, giving men bold enough to take risks opportunities for rich plunder, and I was one of those men. Furthermore, Spain had previously declared the land where present-day Colombia and Cartagena lie as New Granada. There was some bad blood between myself and the Spanish after a bitter encounter in the Battle of San Juan de Alua in present-day Mexico in 1568, where I henceforth sought my revenge on the Spanish. I was feeling greedy for pirate riches and was waiting for my opportunity of reprisal against the Spanish at sea and abroad. At that time, Cartagena was the capital of the Spanish Main in the Americas, and at the time just before our invasion, there were 250 inhabitants and no military people in the town. Later, I would come to find out that Cartagena had heard some news of our potential raid from informants. Our arrival to Cartagena was relatively smooth. You see, Cartagena is sheltered and reachable only through the Boca Chica and Boca Grande channels neither of which had been blocked against our entry. Only the inner harbor was guarded by a fort at Boqueron. We were sneaky in our approach and landed at two in the morning on that day of February the 10th of 1586. I was quite brutish in my living years on the earth and told my crew that they must win this battle in the capture of Cartagena or they would not be permitted passage back onto our great ship. Furthermore, all retreaters were to be hanged. We snuck upon Cartagena, myself and my cohort, Carlyle, leading nearly 1,700 men, dodging sharpened and poisonous stakes that had been set up in advance by the Spanish. The Spanish had prepared a modest militia with 300 harquebuses, a muzzle-loaded firearm, 100 pikes, which is a pole weapon for on-foot combat, and 200 indigenous bowmen. The Spanish had also placed a masonry wall of about four or five feet in height with a ditch in the front of it and with four guns mounted behind it. By mid-morning, and after much battling on land and from out ships, Carlyle and myself became the victors as we chased Cartagena's defender out of the town. But we lost many Englishmen in the process, a fact that we would attempt to hide. Now was the time to claim a ransom for the city of Cartagena. I was finally able to execute vengeance upon Spain. I waited there for several weeks negotiating for as much as I could make off with. For, in my earthly life, I was hungry for riches and revenge. Each time that the Spanish would deny one of my ransom offers, I would strike against the town of Cartagena, pillaging landmarks and buildings one by one as I was refused. It was when my cannon destroyed part of the town's newly constructed cathedral that the Spanish confirmed a ransom price with me. They were to pay me 107,000 ducats, or Spanish eight reales, which is the equivalent of 200 million of today's United States dollars. I also took with me anything of value that I desired, including African and Indian slaves. I acquired quite a fortune for my pirating of Cartagena. Because Cartagena was one of my richest pirating and pillaging experiences, I have returned here to haunt it for a time and revisit the land I once knew. When I first arrived, there was but a small amount of the city established. And my goodness, it appears the Spanish have invested a great deal of money in fortifying this once weaker city, as they have built the fortress of San Felipe de Barajas with a massive fortifying wall guarding Cartagena from pirating in the future. There are many other buildings that tower over the Cartagena of my past. Furthermore, it appears that you, 
New Granada, and place of Cartagena, have now become Colombia, proclaimed independent of Spain in 1819 by a rebellion led by Simon Bolivar. As your own land, you have become freed from my old enemies, the Spanish, as well. But you are not the people that I remember in this land of Cartagena. In the Cartagena of today, there are not just Spanish and Indians, indigenous communities as you call them today, but also the generations that followed Spanish and African slave heritage. You are many people at once. African, Spanish, and indigenous have become Creoles, mulatos, mestizos, and everything in between. And with such a variety and mixture of people and cultures, so many beautiful things have emerged. You have music, architecture, and literature that lay claim to your geography. Cartagena, you were the source of much wealth and emotion for me in my life on this earth. I would like to salute you for your beauty, growth, independence, diversity, and endurance. To cross over to the afterlife, I must make amends with the town I pillaged and harmed so many years ago. I extend to you, Cartagena de las Indias, a formal apology for my mistreatment and manipulation of your city and resources. I extend this humble confession to you and hope that my spirit may be free from the chains of my earthly life as a pirate, privateer, sea captain, navigator, and slaver. Fare thee well, Cartagena.